is the participation of the stakeholders in the process because the stakeholders bring not only uh, uh, common sense and the interest of the students, they bring the, the sensitivity to the culture. People are reasonable, but people have to be included in the process. And on the school closing issue, what I hear from people is that they absolutely do not see the sense in selling the real estate, in selling our buildings, and then turning them over to someone else to do what the district should be doing with those buildings. That's right. I guess my last question also for you is, given this was the, probably the legislative process takes time, and uh, I'm guessing your chances of getting a signature from the governor on this are, are not great. Um, are there other steps to take? These are all plans that are supposed to happen in the next six months. Uh, you know, are there other steps that the board might take to prevent this from happening? Or, you know, what, what's the plan B, I guess? Well, I mean, the plan B, uh, the board is certainly uh, has been and will continue to be a vocal in opposition to this. I, I, I mean, legislatively, I don't know, you know, what else can be done. I think that that's moving forward as it can. So if you're asking me then um, what the community sees, I cannot speak for the community. I can only say that I'm in touch with a great number of uh, community folks, some of who are here today, and I can say that people are angry, that I see people coming together in a way that I haven't seen since, uh, I say, the early 1980s. So I see a really massive coming together in terms of unity of message and from what I saw last night, I also see that people are coming out of their individual uh, silos of, uh, you know, organizing around their particular school or their particular program and I see a, a really massive coming together. What that means and how it plays out, I cannot say, but I can say that people are coming together. One of the things that can be done, win, lose, or draw, judiciary. We go to court. Yeah. Because there's a question about whether or not you can sell some of these buildings. This is not, these are, a lot of these are, these are not buildings that were built during SDA, during school construction or court decisions. These are buildings that were built Historical. many years ago. They are Newark taxpayers' asset. And the question is how you convey them. That may, may be a big challenge as to how you convey them. And so there's more action, and maybe it should be simultaneously with the bill passing through. But hopefully, and this is why I said it's going to be interesting how the legislature speaks. I'm putting this in today. It'll probably wind up in Senator Ruiz's committee, which means that she can post this bill whenever she wants to. Hope she posts it right away. The same thing on the assembly side, right away. Then, if it's posted right away, it'd be interesting to see if the president will post this bill right away. And the speaker will post it right away. Because if they do that, that means the next three or four meetings we have will be on the governor's desk if we get the votes. Who's the assembly sponsor? Or do you have one yet? Assembly woman, Bonnie Watson Coleman. Senator, Senator, I know this is happening in, in Newark, but what's your message to Patterson? And this is happening in Newark because Newark is the testing ground for all of this. Pilot. If, if they do it in Newark, they get away with it. They're successful. I'm telling you, you can mark my word. You can put on it. Patterson and Jersey City are next. We'll be another New Orleans. This is what Bloomberg is in New York. Okay? And I can say this to you Camden is new in the process. And so Camden has to go through some QSAC phase. We have to change QSAC, but we need to monitor that because they're going to get swallowed up in all of this stuff big time, um, you know, probably with no fight um, down there if we don't pay attention. Then they'll eventually move in and say, okay, let's go and intervene in Asbury. They'll start picking these districts that's hanging out there on the urban side mm -hmm. with, with governance problems and stuff like that. They have to intervene. But the reality they'll say, okay, we, we finish part of the, the majority of our job here, let's go intervene in there. That's why we let them hang out so long. And that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a Pac-Man effect on all of us. But the reality is that the kids lose, the community loses, mm -hmm. and parents suffer. Yes, yes. And if I could add one last thing, um, my name is Darren Martin, um, PTO president and parent at Ideal Elementary School in Newark. This is not only about schools that's failing. 
Ivy Hill Elementary School has passed every benchmark. Every single benchmark. Now, they haven't talked about closing our school, but we passed every benchmark. On the state's website, it talks about SGOs, which is student growth objectives, and SGP, student growth percentiles. We've met every benchmark in that. Now, they're talking about we are redesigned school, whatever that means. They, everything is redesigned, review, re, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of reads. And, and, and the problem is, we have met every benchmark, so why are we being redesigned? If it's not broken, why are we fixing it? I don't understand it. And this level of intimidation. Intimidation is really um, rare this ugly head. Yesterday they came down to tear my PTO notices down. Mm. Um, two people from 2C, the street who worked with Cammie Anderson. Mm. And then two of them, they pushed me, so I filed charges against them as well. Wow. So th this level of intimidation is serious. Mm. And it comes straight from the governor, governor's office on down. Mm. That this, that they think they can push people around. We will not be moved. Let me say, well, I don't know if this was said before I came in, because before this was still here. You know, I go to a meeting. Seven, eight hundred people last night, and that's what Tony was speaking about. And I get parents to come up and tell me that they went into a school setting, and the superintendent of schools, a state appointed superintendent, took the kids in the library to talk to them, mm -hmm. and locked them in there and would not let the parents come in. I have a real serious problem with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. If a cop stopped me on the corner, and I'm not a kid, or stop a kid, and do certain things, that means I'm temporarily under arrest. That's I've been retained. Those kids were like hostages momentarily in the room because parents, adults couldn't come. What are you, brainwashing our kids? Mm -hmm. and so that needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. And I hope they bring charges against that so it can be aired in the courts regardless of the outcome. Mm -hmm. Because the only time you're going to get the media printing thing is when you go to court, win or lose, and get it aired. Mm -hmm. And the parents were actually there. They were outside the door. Yes. And they were not looking no. inside the room. PTA meeting. Mm -hmm. there was, yeah. Yes, there was a PTA meeting being held, and they would not allow the parents nor the teachers yeah, to, to be in the building room. or be in the room with the students. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay. On behalf of Communities United, Parents Against One Newark, and um, Newark Students Union, and Save Our Schools New Jersey, we want to say thank you for coming. And um, just one thing, Senator uh, Ruiz just wanted me to let everybody know that Senator Woman and Aliana um, is not only because she's not even the Essex delegation, it's because she had to take one of her kids to the doctor. Okay. Oh. Um, but she stands behind this as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.